Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to the U.S. consulate. I need to do our passports. I'm going to go find the bus station and take the bus. Oui, oui, it's okay? No, it's okay? Ah, merci. Désolé, oh, about to pay, yes. I think I made it just in time, caught the bus, and the bus driver told me I'm on the right bus, and she knows exactly actually where I need to go, so hopefully she'll stop. Somewhere in this little shopping center is our U.S. consulate representative. This is the address. So it's in here, yes? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm in the right place. You see the... I'm pretty okay. Ah, yes I do. Yerana, Chris, it's Nicole. and am hoping that um, you'll make it to your office. Chris, the representative for the consular, is no. <laughs> out of the country. He's not here. He's still in the U.S. So back to the arena. <laughs> Got to try again. Oh my gosh. Film this. Yeah. See, yes, I will film that. that. We've got it all in French. Oh, and, French. And, yeah, in English. In English. <laughs> you think he's gonna be here tomorrow? Crossing fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Called, left a message, and waited for a little while. Chris is in the U.S. <laughs> He's trying to get on a flight tonight. And I was like, I was just emailing with him yesterday. Why didn't he say anything? Back on the bus, heading to uh, the consulate office to see if we can renew our passports this time. Chris is here, which is good. I'm glad I'm here. My new friend Ricky and I, and we uh, hopped on the bus together from the consulate. And then the bus driver ran over something, and the bus is now broken. Now we're standing here and waiting for a mechanic. That's what the bus driver knocked over. One of those guys used to be there. Somebody moved it, and now it's here. It doesn't look like it did any damage, though. We just found out that um, nothing's wrong with the bus. It's just that she ran out of gas. Okay. No gas. <laughs> so now, so now we're waiting for somebody to, 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 to bring the gas. Now we're waiting. <laughs> uh, my English is. <laughs> it's better than my French. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah, thank you so much. You're welcome, Nicole. Success! And now we're off to interview some friends of ours who've been sailing for a long time and have some unique perspectives we think you might find interesting. And one of them's a movie star. I'm Franz Huber, I'm from Holland. I was working as a boat builder and they were building, were building boats for film, 14 Boston uh, whale boats from the 1800s. And when the work started drying up and the, and the boss came up to me and said, yeah, Franz, uh, every got a minute. I said, oh, yeah, here we go. They want you on the, on the movie. The story was about these people rotting away in those whale boats, yeah. drift, you know, after the ship was sunk, right? So they looked real bad from the sun. And I actually had been in the tropical sun for a year. So I looked the part, my hair was like the model for the other hair. They asked me if I had the highlights put in like, and I started laughing at because I've never even been to a hairdresser. So then they started coloring those teeth, like a bit of black there, a bit of rot there, and a bit of fallen out there, and an empty one there, right? And then when they came to me, let me see your teeth first, and I'm like, and they go, and I, okay, you're good. What was the movie called? Heart of the Sea. What was it about? Uh, about the whaling, about the Essex uh, ship, the Essex that was sunk by the whale. Uh, Herman Melville and uh, 
wrote Moby Dick based upon that story. Well, I didn't ha really have any lines other than uh, ha he uh, uh, I sir <laughs> get that well. <laughs> Come on, like with a bit of that. Can you do the face for the camera? Or the the, the death face. The death face, like. <laughs> 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 We sailed um, from New Zealand all around the Pacific and the uh, Indian Ocean, Indonesia and, uh, and, uh, and Asia. And that lasted 14 years. J-A-Y-D-E-N. J-A-Y-D-E-N? Yeah, just Jaden. Jaden sounds like a Jedi name. Like Jaden, the Jedi warrior of the Empire. Do you prefer living on land or do you prefer sailing? I don't know. I think the um, kids always leave on a boat. They just leave to a different place. On land, they don't leave much. Is that the hardest part of sailing? Yes. We've lived on a boat for ages now, and I, and I want to live on land now. There's definitely more kids on land. I like it at the marina because there's kids here and That's nobody really too. moves around so much. Mm -hmm. Who is that? A guinea pig. Exactly. It's called Chio. What does Chio mean? Squeak. They steal other animals' burrows. What? Guinea pigs are like pirates? Yeah. <laughs> so that's perfect, because you're like a pirate too, right? Not really. What mm. advice would you give cruising kids? Take entertainment so that you don't get bored on passage. Uh, you have to be able to like tin food and noodles and dry stuff because when you're on passage that's pretty much all you have you don't have much fruit well you know if you have the guinea pig and the tin food starts getting bad there's i think there's tin might food be... doesn't really go bad yeah. even if you are stranded on the life raft I, I think you just still shouldn't eat your um pets and while cruising with babies was actually it's probably a lot easier than people imagine it to be you know we've got all the time to spend with your child which is which is really nice all they need is you and they need love and care and, and you know you can just really focus on that it keeps it very simple you're there for every moment you know it's really nice you don't you don't miss any of it when you have the responsibility of sailing a boat across the ocean the children know that it's a serious business and they know there's also a time for fun but when they hear you asking them to do something they will come and they will respond and the boys are very good at most of the time they're very good at helping out with the things that need to be done when we first bought this boat our idea was to cruise for three years across the pacific sell the boat in new zealand so we're sort of coming to the end of that three year thing but we're not quite sure what we're going to do next we just have to decide where and what we're going to do and how we're going to earn money and support ourselves do you have a favorite memory from sailing from all your adventures um seeing land after 39 days, it's after 29 days at sea. Because all my energy was stored up for 29 days. Did you land and you say, I claim this island in the name of the Jedi? No, I didn't. Any last words of advice for the world? Protect guinea pigs. My parents put a lot of time and effort and a lot of arguing and a lot of that into giving me a good education, good upbringing, well mannered and languages and you know culture and all this sort of stuff and I went like to university all the way to the end and it all basically went nowhere so to let that all go to just walk away from all of that opportunity and all of that like privileged upbringing kind of thing was super difficult I found it really hard I don't I'm not even sure if it is that's a good idea for me I think uh, it was a good thing. Maybe now I could have done better, but at that time I don't think I was. There was enough left of me to be able to fight that fight and get anywhere. You know, Sterling Hayden or something that said like uh, every uh, every endeavor should be uh, uh, solidly based upon a lack of uh, financial, uh, for lack of money. Otherwise, it becomes a mediocre experience. I think that's really true. I mean, I have. Uh, due to lack of money, done things and gone places that uh, led to super ex interesting experiences. Okay, thank you, Franz. <laughs> All right, Appreciate pleasure. pleasure. Excellent. Now's the high time to... Yeah, you need a little bit, say a little bit louder with a little enthusiasm. Okay, now's the time to click thumbs up. And subscribe.